Revelation 12 tells of Archangel Michael's key role as the defender of the woman clothed with the sun. The woman clothed with the sun is the figure of the Archia Mary, beloved Mary, the mother of Jesus, rightfully called the queen of angels and the one whom God selected to bear the divine man-child. Who is that divine man-child? That is the universal Christ. That is the Son of God. That is the real identity of the living Christ in each one of us. The woman clothed with the sun represents woman today and the female principle in all of us. The soul is the feminine potential of being in both men and women. Archangel Michael came to defend the Divine Mother and her Divine Man-Child. He cast her adversary and all of his legions out of the courts of heaven into the earth. Revelation says, and there was war in heaven, that is, in the heaven world, which we call the etheric octave. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, that was Lucifer, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. What does this tell us? It tells us something very important. It tells us that fallen angels were consigned to the earth in human bodies as a punishment for their attempt to violate the Divine Mother and the Christ Child. Church fathers have vehemently argued against this interpretation of, the, of Revelation, but I tell you that it is so. These fallen angels were literally cast into physical bodies where they would have to work out their karma and evolve through those physical bodies. The Christ child is the real identity of every one of you and every person on earth. The word Christ is not a, simply a Christian term. It is taken from the Greek word Christos. It means anointed. The Christ is the one who is anointed with the light of the I am presence and the one who is anointed with that light is your own higher self, which you see as the center figure in the chart, whom we address as the Holy Christ self. We understand that God sent forth that only begotten Son as the divine man-child, and that he gave to each of us that personal presence of the Christ. A billion Christs times one is still one. There is only one Christ, one Son of God, but unto each of us is given that living Christ presence that we might commune personally with our Lord. In the great rebellion, Lucifer caused the fall of many other angels under him. It says his tail drew the third part of heaven. A third of the angels fell and followed him and imitated his ways of rebellion and pride. So through their pride and ambition, they fell from their state of heavenly grace. Many among them were required to take embodiment upon earth, as I have said, to work out their karma, but also to give them a time to repent, to be saved, to turn about and face the Lord and accept him as their savior. Most of them have never done so. They have sworn eternal enmity against the Lord and his Christ. What exactly was Lucifer's sin? He committed the first act of self-idolatry. He fell through pride, ambition, and defiance to the laws of God. He talked to God and he said, I can run this universe better than you, and certainly better than your son. I am higher in the order of hierarchy than your son. I will not bow down before him. I will not recognize him, and I will not serve him. These are the words of Lucifer and all of these angels who followed him in that wave of pride said the same. Ever since Michael cast the angels out of heaven, there has been a war going on on earth. The scripture says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down to you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. 
This war is taking place today in our cities. Look at our children. Look at them as they get on drugs. Look at them as they have early sex and therefore get AIDS before the age of 20. Look at what is happening to these children, to their bodies, souls, and minds. This is the war in the streets of our cities, and our government will not even recognize and take the definitive action it needs to take to find that cure for AIDS and also to see to it that it is not spread. We have a big challenge on our hands. Who of us could even begin to consider that we could meet this challenge? We cannot do it. But with God, we can, with his angels. And if we will learn to make the call, we will see how millions of angels can turn things around. Once you set your feet on the path, the path that leads you straight home to God, and make an about face and turn toward the sun, you will have to defeat the adversary within and without. This will be your challenge, but you will do it because Christ strengthens you, because the angels will do battle for you. The adversary does not attack those who are going away from God and who have no desire to return to God. He attacks the light bearers who bear not only the light, but also are willing to take responsibility to bear their own karma. We need the archangels because without them we are no matched for the fallen angels in our midst. As I have said, Archangel Michael is the prince of the archangels. All hosts of light serving in this system of worlds and beyond are under his command. He recently told us, there are days when for one single one of you, I and my legions in order to defend you will slay 10,000 demons. Think about that. Think about how these unseen helpers of God are defending you every day of your life. What a tremendous intercession we have. I know that Archangel Michael has personally saved my life a thousand times and many more times than I may not even be aware of. I'm sure the same is true for you. One of the saints of heaven whose name is Liberty told us, Archangel Michael is at your side and does answer your call and does answer it best when you keep a daily momentum of prayers to him. She said your call for help will be answered instantaneously when you have built this momentum. You recall the words of Jesus. They said that he spoke as one with authority. He had the authority of the I am that I am and the angels and he knew it. Let us follow in his footsteps and in his example. We can also command the angels, but we must never fail to do so in the name of God. We have no authority to command God or his angels. That is why we must also pronounce, always pronounce the name of God. The Bible says that he that will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So we say in the name of God, I am that I am given to us by Moses. In the name of that mighty I am presence and the Christ presence with me, and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I decree. And then you would give one of the decrees in our angel booklet. Let's take out that angel booklet now. Let's take that decree for traveling protection. It's number four on page one. So we will say, in the name of God, in the name of my mighty I am presence, and Jesus Christ, I decree together. Lord Michael before, Lord Michael behind, Lord Michael to the right, Lord Michael to the left, Lord Michael above, Lord Michael below, Lord Michael, Lord Michael, wherever I go. I am his love protecting here. I am his love protecting here. I am his love protecting here. The statue of Archangel Michael that is in front of me shows him casting the devil out of heaven into the earth and binding that force. You can see Archangel Michael coming to you in full armor. You can see him with a mighty sword. It's actually a sword of blue flame. And he cuts away from you everything that is not of God, that is not of the light. And he reinforces for you your divine plan, your inner blueprint, yours to accept by free will if you choose to. So we come back to Archangel Michael and the I am that I am and Moses. Either God is the God of very gods of your life and there is no other power that can move you, 
or you acknowledge lesser gods. If you are a house divided, if you allow divisions in your members of any kind, then you are vulnerable to forces who will use and abuse you. Yes, these fallen angels, they will flatter you, but they will chew you up and spit you out. You will be vulnerable to the end of this life and throughout all future lifetimes until you decide to stand, face, and conquer the adversary of your immortality. What do the fallen angels want to do? They want to make sure that you never become immortal, that you will never attain to that immortality and to the levels of perfection that you once had with your twin flame. So this is the mantra that is your key affirmation of the one God. I ask you to stand in honor of the presence of God who is with you and Archangel Michael who stands at your side in this very moment. Together. I am presence, thou art master. I am presence, clear the way. Let thy light and all thy power take possession here this hour. Charge with victory's mastery, blaze with lightning, blaze thy substance into this thy form descend. That perfection and its glory shall blaze forth and earth transcend. I am presence, thou art master, I am presence, clear the way. Let thy light and all thy power take possession here this hour. Charge with victory's mastery, blaze with lightning, blaze thy substance into this thy form descend. That perfection and its glory shall blaze forth and earth transcend. I am presence, thou art master, I am presence, clear the way. Let thy light and all thy power take possession here this hour. Charge with victory's mastery, blaze with lightning, blaze thy substance into this thy form descend. That perfection and its glory shall blaze forth and earth transcend. Thank you. Please be seated. Because you acknowledge the presence of God and his archangel, when you give this call, a cylinder of blue flame descends around you for your protection. You can visualize yourself with a tube of light around you, the violet flame in the center, and the extra added protection of Archangel Michael. Now let's say you're dealing with your teenage son or daughter who has a very serious problem with cocaine or heroin or other dysfunctional aspects to his psychology. You're dealing with legions of forces of darkness who are working against this child, and make no mistake about it. There is no problem of addiction without entities, demons, going after the person and reinforcing that addiction. That's why addictions are so hard to break. You're not just wrestling against the substance and the habit and the toxicity of it. You're wrestling against unseen forces. So you're going to have to get more determined when it comes to dealing with possessing demons, you need to call upon the Lord to embolden you. This is no time for meekness. You are challenging devils because you are commanding the light to act and you are commanding the archangels and their legions to bind these forces. That is the reason why this is the time for boldness. If you're not familiar with this dynamic form of prayer, give it a try, especially if nothing else you've tried has worked. You just might save a loved one. Why did God give us a voice and the power of speech and a throat chakra if he didn't want us to deliver the power of his spoken word? Remember when God created, he spoke, let there be light. He didn't meditate, he spoke. And you have to speak if you want to command the elements and forces. This is what I would do if I were working on a situation with teenagers in trouble. I would follow that invocation and that affirmation that we just gave with a repetition of it. To repeat a mantra is very important, to say our prayers again and again. The value of this is that the angels need the momentum of our energy and our call here below to do their job. They need our decree action. This is not the vain repetition of prayers. This is a very conscious determination to pray and continue to pray and pray without ceasing, as the Bible says, so that we can be that reinforcing presence side by side with a teenager who is having to wrestle literally with the very forces of hell. 
All religions of the world in all ages back to Atlantis and Lemuria have practiced the science of the spoken word, repeating mantras by the hour to draw down the light of God from the level of the I am presence. God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. What he is saying is, my vibrations are not your vibrations. Our vibrations are human. We live in a dense world. God lives in the exalted plane of light. So to pull that light down, we use his name, I am, in decrees and prayers. And so that light gets anchored here below, where? In your chakras, in your seven chakras. Those are the vessels that contain the light. We need to give the mantra day by day or the prayer or the rosary or whatever you're most comfortable with in your own church until the action we have called for it is accomplished. Traveling protection that we gave is very important for the protection of your children. It's a snappy little call. You can give it in your car. Yesterday I told you the story of the men who were buried by tons of earth. And because the mother of one of them had always taught him about angels and always called for angels around him. Both of them were saved, saved miraculously. They were two hours under this ton of dirt. So you see, angels will deliver us, but we must pray and we must call for that protection. We have to call and assign angels, not just one, but a dozen around our teenagers today because there's so much stuff that they can get into from when we see them leave in the morning to when they get back at night. Archangel Gabriel has told us that when we give this decree, Lord Michael before, Lord Michael behind, that not only does Michael come, but all of the seven archangels will reinforce their presence around you. I received a letter from a woman witnessing to the remarkable intercession of Archangel Michael in the life of her teenage daughter, Kelly. A few days after Kelly and her friends learned about Archangel Michael, they were in a terrible collision. This mother had had these teens over to her house and sat them down and talked to them about Archangel Michael and taught them how to call to him, to decree to him. This is the description of the collision. A fully loaded 18-wheel truck hit their car broadside rolled up over the car and dragged the car under its wheels for 500 feet before stopping. Kelly was pinned in the crushed metal from the bottom of her feet to mid-chest. One wheel of the stall truck was directly above her lower body and she was not able to breathe. With all the strength Kelly had left in the silence of her heart, she called to Archangel Michael for help. Instantly, the truck lifted. She had time to twist the upper part of her little body free. Then the weight of the truck descended again. Kelly received a crushed pelvis. Her leg was snapped in half, and she had internal injuries. She was in extreme pain, but she could breathe, and she was alive. Through the grace of God, Archangel Michael heard her silent call and came as he had promised. Those who witnessed this event could not explain what happened. They only knew that a miracle had taken place and that a life had been spared. Through the grace of God and after three surgeries, Kelly's body has been repaired. Kelly's mother concluded her letter. I witness to you, Archangel Michael is always at our side. He simply wants our call and he may not intercede until he is asked. Sometimes you assess a situation, you think it's so hopeless that not even the archangels can do anything about it. Well, that's just when you need to give the calls and that's when you have to remember that there's always a little devil here or there to whisper in your ear and tell you that the archangels can't help you. Or maybe you'll just make the calls later after you finish this project and the project winds up being six hours long and you still haven't made the call. Surrender the situation to the will of God. Sometimes people are rescued from death and sometimes they are not. We aren't God and we shouldn't play God. We do not hold the fate of men and nations in our hands. We don't pretend to know the course of people's karma or what is God's will for them. But one thing is certain, our call will compel the answer, God's answer for that person and the maximum amount of mercy that the law will afford that person in that situation. Just make the call. If you don't make the call, for sure we can't help you.
But if you do, having faith as a grain of mustard seed, the great law itself will see to it that all that can be done for the one or the many who are in distress will be done. More than that we cannot expect, for God does not break his own laws, and he doesn't break the law of karma, and we all have karma to deal with. So sometimes when we go through a little pain and a little bit of injury, it softens our heart, we become more humble, we learn profound lessons about life, we become more grateful, and perhaps not so proud anymore. So God is teaching us in many ways, and let's be grateful for every trial. Archangel Michael has assigned members of his legions to assist us personally. The archangels will actually assign to us angels as though they were our personal staff. You can assign your angels to run errands, prepare the way for successful meetings, work out your impossible problems. You can command them to undertake special projects on behalf of your family, your business, or your church. You can ask them to tutor your children to do their homework, to help them with a learning problem, to help you establish meaningful relationships with the right people. You can ask them to do mundane as well as spiritual things. Someone once wrote me this story of how Archangel Michael helped her. She had been visiting her parents in wintertime in New England. It had just snowed and her father had gotten a rented van stuck in the driveway. He tried rocking it to no avail, then he pushed with the girl at the wheel. Then they both pushed, but still no luck. The more they pushed, the deeper the van got stuck. About a half an hour or so, the daughter, who was only five foot three, convinced her father to get back into the van and start rocking again while she pushed by herself. Then she made an intense call to Archangel Michael to place his electronic presence over her and to push that van. Archangel Michael, push that van. That's how you speak a command to an angel. They expect you to speak with the authority of your own Christhood. In under one minute, the van was out of the rut and onto the road. The father was dumbfounded. How could his tiny daughter have been able to move the van by herself? She told him it wasn't herself at all. It was Archangel Michael. I'd like to tell you that the master's keynote is the signet of his identity, and the keynote of Archangel Michael's retreat is the soldier's chorus from Faust by Charles Gounod. That particular song that we sing to the angels is on the cassette that I held up for you. Archangel Michael recently made the commitment to each and every one of us that if we would give our decrees and songs to Archangel Michael, for 20 minutes each day, he would keep an angel with us until the hour of our victory. 20 minutes of decrees each day. That's not really hard to do, especially when you do it while you're driving here and there. I would like to share with you a story of how one diligent decreer turned the tide by invoking the power of Archangel Michael. You might remember that for seven months in 1985, a killer called the Night Stalker committed 14 murders and 20 rapes and assaults in Los Angeles and San Francisco. He entered the homes of his victims at night through unlocked doors and windows. On August 31st, this devotee of Archangel Michael, who told me this story, got up at 5 a.m. Something came over her and she felt in her heart the intense determination that this was the day the Night Stalker had to be caught. She started by giving the Archangel Michael rosary. She repeated it by the hour, dedicating it to one purpose, the catching of the Night Stalker. That very day, Richard Ramirez, the suspect, was caught in an East Los Angeles neighborhood when residents saw him trying to steal a car. They captured him and beat him until the police arrived. Police determined that Ramirez's fingerprints matched those found in a stolen car known to have been used by the Night Stalker. You may not believe that this was accomplished through the action of one individual who decided to keep a vigil because Archangel Michael communicated to her that this was the moment when this man could be taken. They say miracles are for believers. And you yourself will become a believer when you start realizing the many miracles Archangel Michael will, be, will perform both for you and through you in your prayers for others. It only takes one person with determination to turn the tide 
of something that is very dark, that is malignant, and that has been there and continues to be there with all of the newspaper articles, all of the people praying. What this person did that was different is that she concentrated her calls to Archangel Michael, determined in her heart this was the day, and would not leave her prayer vigil until what she intended to accomplish was accomplished. That rosary of Archangel Michael was dictated to me by Archangel Michael. There's a tremendous power in it. If you think you are facing a problem that simply cannot be resolved, I counsel you to go to Archangel Michael and prove him. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord. Prove me. Here's another amazing report of the power of Archangel Michael. Did you ever hear the story of the allies in World War I who claimed they were saved by angelic reinforcements? The angels reportedly appeared between the 26th and the 28th of August, 1914, in Belgium at the Battle of Mons. The British and French were retreating towards Paris when a unit of German cavalry charged after them. The British expected certain death, but to their astonishment they saw a troop of angels standing between themselves and the advancing Germans. A British officer later reported that his men were escorted by a phantom cavalry for 20 minutes. Some of the French soldiers claimed they saw St. Michael the Archangel dressed in golden armor, riding on a white horse and wielding a sword. Some of the British soldiers thought it was St. George. They said they saw a tall man with yellow hair in golden armor on a white horse, holding up his sword with his mouth open, crying, Victory! One soldier said that during the retreat he saw an angel with outstretched wings like a luminous cloud. At that moment, he said, the Germans pulled back. Some Germans reported that they had refused to charge because they saw thousands of troops. They said that their men were absolutely powerless to proceed. Their horses turned sharply around and fled, and nothing could stop them. In reality, there were not thousands of Allied troops, just a small line of soldiers. Thanks to their angelic reinforcements, the Allies successfully completed their retreat from Mons. No matter how big the problem seems in your own life or even on a national scale, turn to Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael says that in addition to calling to his angels to intercede, you may join his legions in their service to the earth for three hours on each night that you volunteer. When you retire at night, call to Archangel Michael to come and take you, to put on you the armor of the angels, and ask to be able to join his legions and learn how to go into battle with them for the protection of souls of light. Archangel Michael also invites you to join in his councils in his retreat at Banff and have a say as to where you would direct his legions. He says you can call to be taken in your finer bodies to his retreat. His angels will recharge your soul with their tremendous energy and light. Archangel Michael's keynote is the Navy hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. As Archangel Michael's angels never go to battle without their armor of light and the full protection of the law, Archangel Michael charges us to do likewise, to put on the whole armor of God. He dictated this direction to the Apostle Paul, do you remember? The Apostle Paul wrote it down in his epistle to the Ephesians. This is what Archangel Michael told the Apostle Paul. Put on the whole armor of God. That means your tube of light. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. This command tells us that righteousness and honor and the virtues of God are our real protection. Having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. You're watching Elizabeth Clare Prophet, world-renowned author and founder of Summit University. Summit University is located at the beautiful Royal Teton Ranch in Park County, Montana, just north of Yellowstone National Park. 
If you'd like more information, call 1-800-245-5445. That's 1-800-245-5445. Let's invoke this armor of God by calling forth our tube of light. It's on the second page of the angel booklet. As we prepare to invoke the tube of light, we invoke the violet flame to clear our consciousness of anything that is less than that vibration of the violet flame. I invite you to stand for these heart, head, and hand decrees. Together. Violet fire, thou love divine, blaze within this heart of mine. Thou art mercy forever true. Keep me always in tune with you. Violet fire, thou love divine, blaze within this heart of mine. Thou art mercy forever true. Keep me always in tune with you. Violet fire, thou love divine, blaze within this heart of mine. Thou art mercy forever true. Keep me always in tune with you. I am light, thou Christ in me. Set my mind forever free. Violet fire forever shine deep within this mind of mine. God who gives my daily bread with violet fire fill my head till thy radiance heaven light makes my mind a mind of light. I am light, thou Christ in me. Set my mind forever free. Violet fire forever shine deep within this mind of mine. God who gives my daily bread with violet fire fill my head till thy radiance heaven light makes my mind a mind of light. I am like the Christ in me, set my mind forever free. Violet fire forever shine deep within this mind of mine. God who gives my daily bread with violet fire fill my head. Till thy radiance heaven light makes my mind a mind of light. I am the hand of God in action, gaining victory every day. My poor soul's great satisfaction is to walk the middle way. I am the hand of God in action, gaining victory every day. My poor soul's great satisfaction is to walk the middle way. I am the hand of God in action, gaining victory every day. My poor soul's great satisfaction is to walk the middle way. Beloved, I am presence bright. Round me seal your tube of light. From ascended master flame, called forth now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire, keeping on in freedom's name till I am one with a violet flame. Beloved, I am presence bright. Round me seal your tube of light from ascended master flame, called forth now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire, keeping on in freedom's name. So I am one with a violet flame. Beloved, I am presence bright, round me seal your tube of light. From ascended master flame, call forth now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire. Keeping on in freedom's name till I am one with a violet flame. I am forgiveness acting here, casting out all doubt and fear. Setting men forever free with wings of cosmic victory. I am calling in full power for forgiveness every hour. To all life in every place, I flood forth forgiving grace. I am forgiveness acting here, casting out all doubt and fear, setting men forever free with wings of cosmic victory. I am calling in full power for forgiveness every hour. To all life in every place, I flood forth forgiving grace. I am forgiveness acting here, casting out all doubt and fear, setting men forever free with wings of cosmic victory. I am calling in full power for forgiveness every hour. To all life in every place, I flood forth forgiving grace. Let's continue these heart, head, and hand decrees. They're wonderful prayer forms that you can give daily. This one is for your supply. Take note that each one focuses through a different chakra therefore is sponsored by a different archangel. Together. I am free from fear and doubt, casting want and misery out, knowing now all good supply ever comes from realms on high. I am the hand of God's own fortune, flooding forth the treasures of light, now receiving full abundance to supply each need of life. 
I am free from fear and doubt, casting want and misery out, knowing now all good supply ever comes from realms on high. I am the hand of God's own fortune, flooding forth the treasures of light, now receiving full abundance to supply each need of life. I am free from fear and doubt, casting want and misery out, knowing now all good supply ever comes from realms on high. I am the hand of God's own fortune, flooding forth the treasures of light, now receiving full abundance to supply each need of life. I am life of God direction, blaze I light of truth in me, focus here all God's perfection from all discord set me free. Make and keep me anchored ever in the justice of thy plan. I am the presence of perfection, living the life of God in man. I am life of God direction, blaze thy light of truth in me. Focus here all God's perfection, from all discord set me free. Make and keep me anchored ever in the justice of thy plan. I am the presence of perfection, living the life of God in man. I am life of God direction, blaze thy light of truth in me. Focus here all God's perfection, from all discord set me free. Make and keep me anchored ever in the justice of thy plan. I am the presence of perfection, living the life of God in man. I am changing all my garments, old ones, for the bright new day. With the sun of understanding, I am shining all the way. I am light within, without. I am light is all about. Fill me, free me, glorify me, seal me, heal me, purify me. I am shining like the sun, I am shining like the sun. I am changing all my garments, old ones, for the bright new day. With the sun of understanding, I am shining all the way. I am light within, without. I am light is all about. Fill me, free me, glorify me, seal me, heal me, purify me. Until transfigured, they describe me. I am shining like the sun. I am shining like the sun. I am changing all my garments, old ones, for the bright new day. With the sun of understanding, I am shining all the way. I am light within, without. I am light is all about. Fill me, free me, glorify me, seal me, heal me, purify me. Until transfigured, they describe me. I am shining like the sun. I am shining like the sun. I am the flame of resurrection, blazing God's pure light through me. Now I am raising every atom from every shadow. I am free. I am the light of God's full presence. I am living ever free. Now the flame of life eternal rises up to victory. I am the flame of resurrection, blazing God's pure light through me. Now I am raising every atom from every shadow, I am free. I am the light of God's full presence, I am living ever free. Now the flame of life eternal rises up to victory. I am the flame of resurrection, blazing God's pure light through me. Now I am raising every atom from every shadow, I am free. I am the light of God's full presence, I am living ever free. Now the flame of life eternal rises up to victory. I am ascension light, victory flowing free, all of good, one at last for all eternity. I am light, all weights are gone, into the air I raise. To all I pour with full God power my wondrous song of praise. All hail, I am the living Christ, the ever-loving one. Ascended now with full God power, I am a blazing sun. I am ascension light, victory flowing free, all of good, one at last for all eternity. I am light, all weights are gone, into the air I raise. To all I pour with full God power my wondrous song of praise. All hail, I am the living Christ, the ever loving one. Ascended now with full God power, I am a blazing sun. I am ascension light, victory flowing free, all of good, one at last for all eternity. I am light, all weights are gone, into the air I raise. To all I pour with full God power my wondrous song of praise. All hail I am the living Christ, the ever loving one. Ascended now with full God power, I am a blazing sun. The bottom of the column of page three we give the sealing of these decrees. And in full faith I consciously accept this manifest, manifest, manifest. And in full faith I consciously accept this manifest, manifest, manifest. And in full faith I consciously accept this manifest, manifest, manifest. Right here and now with full power, eternally sustained, all powerfully active, ever expanding and world unfolding until all are holy, ascended in the light and free. Beloved, I am 
beloved I am, beloved I am. Archangel Michael has given many dictations. In fact, the seven archangels have dictated over 300 dictations to Mark Prophet and to me. So these dispensations are usually for protection. Archangel Michael says, in answer to your call, he will give you his armor and shield. And as you work daily to remove your weaknesses, this armor will be strengthened. Another spiritual tool you can use for protection is to invoke Archangel Michael's blue flame sword. You know, the gift of faith is a very great gift, and that is the gift that Archangel Michael brings to you. Faith. Many people doubt. They doubt themselves. They doubt God. They have a great deal of fear, and they fear God. So faith is not an active element in their lives. We need to have faith in something. People will fail us, but God will not fail us, and the angels will not fail us. When you have absolute faith in God and the power of his spoken word through you, as you give your decrees, what you are calling for will manifest unless, A, what you're decreeing for is not the will of God, or B, the timing is not right for the answer to your prayer to be made manifest. Doubt also blocks the physical manifestation of your decrees. Michael has even said, that if we give him our doubts and fears, he will give back to us his full momentum of faith and his devotion to the will of God. Say, here, Archangel Michael, take all this doubt and fear. I've lived with it long enough. I'll take your faith. You take my doubt and fear. That's a good deal. <laughs> he strengthened Joan of Arc to go forward when all seemed lost. He whispered in her ear, charge, charge, charge. She repeated the command and galvanized the forces of France to fight in defense of liberty. He will do the same for you. He says that when everything seems to be going wrong, you should call to his legions with that command. Call to them to charge, 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 and let victory be proclaimed. How about making that call right now? Charge, 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 and let victory be proclaimed. 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 In that call, you use the full power of your being to accept nothing less than victory every day of your life. We have our little wallet-sized charts of Archangel Michael, Charity, Gabriel, Raphael, Mother Mary, with mantras on the back. In case you forget them, you can pull them out of your wallet in a moment and say them. I would like to conclude our afternoon today by reading to you a letter, a very precious letter. I think this will deeply touch your hearts. This is a letter from a boy named Michael. He wrote it as a young Marine to his mother while he was hospitalized after being wounded on a Korean battlefield in 1950. Dear Mom, I wouldn't dare to write this letter to anyone but you because no one else would believe it. Maybe even you will find it hard, but I've got to tell somebody. First off, I'm in the hospital. Now don't worry, you hear me, don't worry. I was wounded, but I'm okay, you understand? Okay. The doctor says I'll be up and around in a month. But that isn't what I want to tell you. Remember when I joined the Marines last year? Remember when I left how you told me to say a prayer to St. Michael every day? You really didn't have to tell me that. 
Ever since I can remember, you always told me to pray to St. Michael the Archangel. You even named me after him. Well, I always have. When I got to Korea, I prayed even harder. Remember the prayer you taught me? Michael, Michael of the morning, fresh cord of heaven adorning. You know the rest of it. Well, I said it every day, sometimes when I was marching or sometimes resting, but always before I went to sleep. I even got some of the other fellows to say it. Well, one day I was with an advance detail way up over the front lines. We were scouting for the commies. I was plodding along in the bitter cold. My breath was like cigar smoke. I thought I knew every guy in the patrol when alongside of me comes another Marine I had never met before. He was bigger than any Marine I had ever seen. He must have been six foot four and built in proportion. It gave me a feeling of security to have such a buddy near. Anyway, there we were, trudging along, the rest of the patrol spread out. Just to start a conversation, I said, cold, ain't it? And then I laughed. Here I was with a good chance of getting killed any minute, and I'm talking about the weather. My companion seemed to understand. I heard him laugh softly. I looked at him. I've never seen you before. I thought I knew every man in the outfit. I just joined at the last minute, he replied. <laughs> the name is Michael. Is that so, I said, surprised. That's my name, too. I know, he said, and then went on. Michael, Michael of the morning. I was too amazed to say anything for a minute. How did he know my name and the prayer that you had taught me? And then I smiled to myself. Every guy in the outfit knew about me. Hadn't I taught the prayer to anybody who'd listen? Why, now and then they even referred to me as St. Michael. Neither of us spoke for a time, and then he broke the silence. We're going to have some trouble up ahead. He must have been in fine physical shape, for he was breathing so lightly I couldn't see his breath. Mine poured out in great clouds. There was no smile on his face now. Trouble ahead. Trouble ahead, I thought to myself. Well, with the commies all around us, that's no great revelation. Snow began to fall in great thick blobs. In a brief moment, the whole countryside was blotted out, and I was marching in a white fog of wet, sticky particles. My companion disappeared. Michael, I shouted in sudden alarm. I felt his hand on my arm. His voice was rich and strong. This will stop shortly. His prophecy proved to be correct. In a few minutes, the snow stopped as abruptly as it had begun. The sun was a hard, shining disk. I looked back for the rest of the patrol. There was no one in sight. We lost them in that heavy fall of snow. I looked ahead as we came over a little rise. Mom, my heart stopped. There were seven of them, seven commies in their padded pants and jackets and their funny hats. Only there wasn't anything funny about them now. Seven rifles were aimed at us. Down, Michael, I screamed and hit the frozen earth. I heard those rifles fire almost as one. I heard the bullets. There was Michael, still standing. Mom, those guys couldn't have missed. And not at that range. I expected to see him literally blown to bits, but there he stood, making no effort to fire himself. He was paralyzed with fear. That happens sometimes, Mom, even to the bravest. He was like a bird fascinated by a snake. 
At least that's what I thought then. I jumped up to pull him down and that's when I got mine. I felt a sudden flame in my chest. I often wondered what it felt like to be hit. Now I know. I remember feeling strong arms about me, arms that laid me ever so gently on a pillow of snow. I opened my eyes for one last look. I was dying. Maybe I was even dead. I remember thinking, well, this isn't so bad. Maybe I was looking into the sun. Maybe I was in shock. But it seemed I saw Michael standing erect again. Only this time his face was shining. His face was shining with a terrible splendor. As I say, maybe it was the sun in my eyes, but he seemed to change as I watched him. He grew bigger. His arms stretched out wide. Maybe it was the snow falling again but there was a brightness around him like the wings of an angel. In his hand was a sword, a sword that flashed with a million lights. Well, that's the last thing I remember till the rest of the fellows came up and found me. I don't know how much time it passed, but now and then I had a moment's respite from the pain and fever. I remember telling them of the enemy just ahead. Where's Michael, I asked. I saw them look at one another. Where is who, asked one. Michael. Michael, that big Marine I was walking with just before the snow squall hit us. Kids, said the sergeant, you weren't walking with anyone. I had my eyes on you the whole time. You were getting too far out. I was just going to call you in when you disappeared in the snow. He looked at me curiously. How'd you do it, kid? How'd I do what, I asked, half angry despite, despite my wound. This Marine named Michael and I were just Son, said the sergeant kindly, I picked this outfit myself and there just ain't another Michael in it. You're the only Mike in it. He paused for a minute. Just how'd you do it, kid? We heard shots. There hasn't been a shot fired from your rifle and there isn't a bit of lead in them seven bodies over the hill there. I didn't say anything. What could I say? I could only look, open-mouthed with amazement. It was then the sergeant spoke again. Kid, he said gently, every one of those seven commies over the hill there was killed by a sword stroke. That's all I can tell you, Mom, as I say. It may have been the sun in my eyes. It may have been the cold or the pain. But that's what happened. Love, Michael. My prayer for each and every one of you is that you become the friend of Archangel Michael so that when you have need of a friend, he will be there.
For more information on how angels can make a difference in your life, call toll-free 1-800-245-5445. The preceding program was presented by Summit University, Fox 5000, Livingston, Montana, 59047-5000. If you'd like to know more, call this number or write this address. For a free book on the spiritual path, call 1-800-245-5445. That's 1-800-245-5445.